good evening. Um, that St. Andrews has hosted. Um, before I introduce our fantastic invited speaker for this year, who a lot of you have already met, um, I'd like to take a moment to thank Bill Crump um, and his family for all that they've done for St. Andrews School. Um, Bill Crump, um, whom the Crump Lecture is named, um, he came to St. Andrews in 1939 as a second former from a one-room schoolhouse in rural Maryland. 60 years later, he established this lecture series giving us the incredible opportunity to meet and learn from some of the most exciting physicists in the field today. Um, so let's take a moment to thank Bill and his family for the opportunity that we are about to enjoy. It is an honour for me to introduce our Crump Lecturer this year, Dr. Ronald Gamble. Dr. Gamble is an award-winning theoretical astrophysicist. He received his PhD in theoretical astrophysics in 2017 at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical University through a Title III HDBI doctoral fellowship. His doctoral dissertation was the first physics-related doctoral dissertation ever completed through that fellowship at A&T. Dr. Gamble holds professional memberships in the American Astronomical Society, the National Society of Black Physicists, the National Society of Hispanic Physicists, and the American Physical Society. Now, Dr. Gamble is researching the physics of relativistic jet emission from high energy active galactic nuclei and the connection to supermassive black holes using general relativity. He is currently a Crest II visiting assistant research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center and the University of Maryland, and also a NASA Cosmic Orig Origins research scientist. Prior to joining NASA, Dr. Gamble spent seven years in academic teaching designing physics, mathematics, biomedical engineering, and computational science courses and curricula. As a former postdoctoral scholar of theoretical and mathematical physics for the National Strategic Research Institute, he worked for the US government's Defense Threat Reduction Agency, doing work that he tells me he can't discuss because it was classified. Um, now, while that doesn't necessarily mean that Dr. Gamble was on a team of superheroes keeping us all safe from evil aliens, um, given that he can't tell us what he did do, I'm just saying it's possible. And uh, also, yeah, thank you for savings. <laughs> Dr. Gamble is now a DPI, a lead for the Astrophysics Science Division at NASA Goddard. He is a recipient of the Royal Astronomical Society's 2023 Annie Maunder Medal for outreach and public engagement in recognition of his role as Vice President of the organization Black and Astro. Dr. Gamble is also a recipient of a NASA ASD Peer Award and a New Day Foundation's Heart of Gold Award. He has also mentored many students who have gone on to become accomplished scientists themselves. Last but certainly not least, Dr. Gamble is an established oil and acrylic painter, graphic designer, and illustrator with 18 years of experience. And I know that some of our art majors were thrilled to get um, to have him visit their class this morning. Um, he also enjoys playing the piano and was quite excited to see this on the stage when we arrived today. Um, Dr. Gamble embodies the dream that many of you have of pursuing your love of science while still nurturing your other passions, talents, skills, and projects, especially those related to affecting positive changes in the world and helping others. We'll learn so much from Dr. Gamble tonight, but one thing I hope you've all already learned from him 
is that you don't need to have to, you don't have to remold yourself or trim off parts of yourself to become a scientist. In terms of what you need to look like to be a scientist, well, provided that you are a bipedal hominid, preferably with opposable thumbs, then you're good. Um, in fact, the only thing you need to be a scientist is to love science. And anyone can do that. The only thing you need to be a great scientist is to also love to do good in the world. And tonight we get to hear from a great scientist. Please give a warm to hand please welcome to Dr. Gamble. Tonight we are going to be looking at some cosmic geometry, black holes, the intersection of space-time, art, and then the little motion of matter. Right? So we're going to have a little fun with it. I hope everybody brought their phones, because you're going to be scanning some QR codes in that. Ready? Yeah. All right. Oops. Okay. okay. So, kind of to kick this off, right? This is a question I get a lot. A lot, a lot. How in the world did I get my position now? How did I get to NASA? Well, it took a while. Okay. Well, sometimes there we go. So it took a while. This is my journey, right? Anybody from Ohio? One person. Make some noise. No bug out. Right past an Air Force Base, yes, I was a military brat. Judge me later. Moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. Woo! <laughs> uh, grew up there. I went to North Carolina AET State University, North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. It's an HBCU in Greensboro, North Carolina. No Agnes. So there, I spent a lot of time. I was there from 2007 to 2019. So that's 12 years. It's a lot. Now, what did, I, what did I do? I got a bachelor's in physics. I got a master's in experimental high temperature superconductivity. And I have a PhD in theoretical astrophysics there. I did a postdoc at ANT where I designed six new courses in biomedical engineering. I taught there for seven years. Um, and so by the time I left a and I got three degrees and taught for seven years and designed seven courses. After all of that, what happened? I was unemployed for seven months. <laughs> Dang. Should have published more. Now, why seven months? Why, why, if you did all that, why were you unemployed for seven months? One, because of the reason why I'm standing right here representation. Nobody from North Plant and State University had done what I did. So I, at that point, was an anomaly. What is an anomaly? Well, it's the only thing that exists, right? So if you can't find it anywhere else, it must be an anomaly. If it's an anomaly, then do you trust it? Maybe. Right? So that's what happened to me when I graduated, when I left. Now, where did I end up? I ended up at one of the most obscure places in the Northern Virginia area, and that's at the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, which, like Dr. Hyde said, I'm gonna skip over that part <laughs> because we really can't talk about that for like another 10 years. <laughs> Blame the government. But anyway, yeah, what did I do there? Well, I was a theoretical physicist there, I was a mathematical physicist there, I was a postdoc, 
I kind of looked at some projects that were in-house. I managed some grants that were worth a lot of money. And some of these projects are probably out here in the public today, but I cannot identify them. And you can't ask me questions. So moving on. <laughs> but I was in the nuclear technologies effects division, right? Where I looked at the effects of nuclear weapons, right? On the resiliency of your everyday residential Thing. So these are like power grids, these are your homes, cars, people, whatever, right? So that's what we did, that's what we looked at. Um, where did I end up after that? Well, how did I get this job at Ditra? I got recruited off of LinkedIn. <laughs> the power of the internet, right? So I did not find Ditra, Ditra found me. Which was great because all the work that I did at North Carolina A&T State University, they said, oh, we like that. Come work for us. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't have a job. <laughs> How much you men? Oh, okay, I don't care. Cool. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> and so I worked there for about a year and a half, and then NASA popped up and said, hey, come work for us. I'm like, cool. How much are you paying? Not as much as you're making now. <laughs> but we're NASA, and they're like, I'm like, okay, dang, dang, on it. Pay cut, what do I do? Now, I thought about it, meditated on it, prayed about it, went through the three month interview process, and at the end of that, I said, all right, get you deuces. <laughs> because am I gonna give up a few thousand dollars in pay so that I'm not gonna get my dream job as a work at NASA? No. Am I now making more than I did before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. So now, what am I doing at NASA, right? What am I doing at NASA? I'm doing a whole bunch of research that we're going to see today. I'm mentoring students. I'm trying to make the climate of astrophysics better through DEI and outreach, which is why I'm here today. Um, and then also making new programs for NASA so that by the time you are in undergrad by the time you're in grad school. Some of you are gonna get PhDs, if not all of you, maybe. <laughs> cool. Um, you can benefit from some of these programs that I'm creating, helping to create and support at NASA. Yeah? Now, eventually, what am I doing after this? I don't know. Maybe a Nobel Prize. God, if you're listening, Nobel Prize. <laughs> so now, the question mark is, all right, well, where do we go from here, right? Um, well, I'm going to still do research, I'm still doing DEI, I'm still doing outreach, I'm still talking to high school students, I'm still motivating people, I'm still mentoring students that are coming up to me, I'm still getting students from undergrad to grad school to job, right? So I've been doing this for about eight or nine years. In the last nine years, every single one of my students that I mentored either has a full-time job they've got a full ride to grad school, or they've got a PhD. Now, is that an accolade of mine? No, that means they actually did what I told them to do. Um, and it is not. Okay, so now, fun fact here. When I finished my PhD in 2017, I was only one of four to do that from an HBCU. That is not in astronomy, that's in STEM, all STEM. There was only four that year. Wow. Uh, so now, yes, I'm further an anomaly. So according to the statistics, I shouldn't be here with all of these extra accolades, right? So how, how, what am I actually doing? Well, oh, man. <laughs> oh, oops. Okay. <laughs> well, this is what I actually did, right? So these are the courses that I taught. These are the courses that I designed. They cover both biomedical engineering, physics, computational science, scientific visualization, and I did some numerical quantum field theory. Ooh. Um, they are both undergraduate and graduate courses. So I taught everybody. 
Even the non-scientists in that class in white. That class in white was reserved just for non-STEM people, and I taught them physics better than the STEM people in physics. Yeah, weird, isn't it? But it's the way you teach. Uh, so some of these I was a PI on or a principal instructor. Some of these in CD was a curriculum development. So the ones that are, let's see, the ones that are in this cyan and gold are the courses that I have designed. The one in white is also a course that I helped design. These are still being taught at AT right now. They're still there. So now, what is at, what 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 am I doing? What am I doing now? So my research focuses on utilizing general relativity to look at describing the physics for supermassive black holes and the relativistic jets that come from them, right? So well, some of the unknowns are, well, how are jets emitted? What are jets in the first place? And why are they still here? So that's part of my research. And that's what I'm doing right now at NASA Goddard. So you can go look it up. One question I have for you right now, right? Scan this code. All right, scan this code. True false question. So now, what do, I, what do I actually do? What am I actually doing?
I use the entire piece of my brain, both left and right. You've got to use the whole thing, not half, not a quarter, the whole thing, right? So if you use the whole thing, then I can say something like, I theorize scientifically plausible predictions of new physics describing black holes, quasars, and relativistic jets using complex mathematics and analogies from other naturally occurring phenomena. That is your long sentence answer. Yeah, Kaden? Now, what does this mean, right? It's a little confusing. What does all of this mean? Well, it means I study gravitational astrophysics. It means I study astroparticle physics, right? So we're looking at very energetic, very dynamic things in the universe. I'm looking at things like this, it's NGC 2207. It is a NASA European Space Agency joint image that the Hubble telescope took. It is an optical plus x-ray plus infrared layer. This is how we get our images, right? This thing actually exists. It actually looks like this color here. What else am I doing? I am playing. There we go. Well, I'm looking at jets. Somebody was looking at blazars today. That counts this photon map right here. It's 3C279. If you've never seen a blazar before after today, you can say you saw one. That's what it looks like. What's a jet look like? Well, you're looking at a clip right here. So part of the scientific community is using other people's work to advance your own. And then you publish so that somebody can cite your work and help their work and help their work, and help their work, and help their work. This is how we do science. We do it collectively, not individually. Yeah? So now, you can go read my paper. It's online. Look it up. Take a picture, snap it, don't plagiarize. <laughs> a lot of math thing there, a lot of images, but the way it's written, you can tell exactly what I'm doing. Now, the interesting stuff. <laughs> black holes in space time. So does anybody, by showing hands, anybody know about black holes? You all should have all your hands up. I'm to talk to everybody. <laughs> but it's on you. So, get a pass. So now. That was, that's a black hole. They're spherical, right? These green lines are tracing frame dragging around a black hole. If you were to sit around a black hole, right, you would be forced to co-rotate with the black hole. And you would be sped up and sped up and sped up until you get to the point where the light from behind you catches up with you. So if I'm standing in a black hole and I'm being dragged around it, I eventually would see the back of my head. Because at some point, I'm going to catch up with the light that came from me originally. Time dilation. Relativity. This is what happens. Now, when we're talking about space-time curvature, well, what does this actually look like? It looks like this box here, right? This is space-time curvature. They're talking about the same exact things, but different geometries. What kind of physics do I actually do? This is an animation of work that I did in my dissertation. You're looking at a black hole deforming based off of increasing spin, increasing spin. If I spin a black hole fast enough, I'm going to get what's called a naked singularity. Weird stuff. But if I spin it just right, I get something that looks like this on the, on the right. Right? Has anybody heard of M87 before? It's a black hole. We got one. That's all I need. Two. Um, that is the solution of M87. So now, if you're talking, if you're looking at, well, how do you solve these very complex equations? 
These are solutions to those equations. These pictures and this animation are the mathematical solutions. These are mathematically accurate. Not human. There's something. <laughs> but now, 
If you can decompose math, complex mathematical equations and reconstruct them into simpler ones, right, then you're going to be a really good theoretical physicist. You're going to be a really good scientist. Replace complex mathematical equation with complex experiment, with complex biological concepts, complex chemistry, complex medicine. You're going to go really far. If you can take the complex, break it down, reconstruct it into something similar that simple that you can communicate to a broader audience, you're a good scientist. Last thing, mastering thinking outside of the box. If I could never master the art of thinking outside the box, I probably wouldn't be standing here. Because that means I wouldn't have gotten out of grad school. Grad school is that weird season if you go, if you go, <laughs> where you are literally coming up with brand new things and you're pulling it out of you, well, you're pulling it out of somewhere, um, and you're saying, here's my contribution, right? And then you're saying, somebody calls and asks me, hey, yeah, I read your paper on scalar texture field theory for gravitational waves, and can you just, can you come to our conference and talk about it? Oh, me? Sure, why would y'all, okay, y'all read my paper? It literally happens that way. Hey, we're doing an annual lecture in physics, and we're calling it a crump lecture. Do you want to come talk? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Now, I told you before, how many ways can you describe Newton's second law? Take all seven of these and to describe it to someone who's never had physics before. In my class, where I taught non-STEM majors, they learned all seven of these ways to describe Newton's second law. By the end of the semester, they knew all seven of these, and they never had calculus before. It doesn't matter if you were good or bad at math, you can be a physicist. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is that you can describe this complex thing very simply. If you can teach others, you're going to be a good scientist. If you can't, maybe you should go into finance or something. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now, how do I do physics? Well, I do it this way. You start with a known object, right? We know black holes exist. We know general relativity describes black holes fairly well. The current metric is there, space time, all that jazz. Yeah, that's cool. But what are we doing with it? And who made this up? Well, Einstein did, and a whole bunch of other people did, right? So Einstein didn't just make it up by himself. He had a whole bunch of other people contributing to the overall science of general relativity as a concept, right? So this was uh, over 100 years ago. Why are we still using this? Because it still works. Now, after way too much coffee, you get new physics which is great and it's exciting, but what the crap is it? It took me months to interpret this equation at the bottom here. The equation at the bottom is brand new, that's mine. That's the one that I came up with. The other equations that you saw before are all mine. Those are the ones that I derived. That one up top, and this one right here, the Einstein field equations, I can't take credit for that, but I use those. So again, I'm using other people's work to advance the field. It's a collective. Now, if you want 
A headache, if you want some of the darkest nightmares ever, you can go read my dissertation. <laughs> I guarantee you, it's 200 pages of all the math that you've never seen before. It's a textbook. Now, last thing I'm going to say to you. Keep asking what if, right? What if I never graduated from a and What if I actually listened to the people to tell me you should change your major? What if I actually listened to the people to tell me, eh, theoretical physics isn't really for our people? What if I actually listened to the people that told me I'm not going to make it? Or that I shouldn't be hired at NASA? Or that I shouldn't be hired at UMD? Or that I'm just a minority? Or I'm an anomaly? Or, well, this is just a one-time chance, right? What if? What if you didn't listen to it at all? What if you didn't listen to your grade that you got in math last year? What if you got a better one next year? What if you emailed somebody for tutoring? What if you got a mentor to help you out? What if you kept reading ahead in your textbook? What if you tried to learn the math by yourself? What if you asked your teachers for help? What if you asked your peers for help? What if you actually went to that space camp that you wanted to go to, but none of your friends wanted to go to? What if you were weird? My ADHD, my Asperger's, I'm on the spectrum, they all doing this right now. And they're worrying why my phone doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but what if I use all of that to uniquely describe myself in a way that benefits you all later on? So now, to kind of kick off, I know you guys have tons of questions. Why if Iron Man didn't pick up the stones? How would Endgame end? Right? <laughs> Last thing I'm going to say is keep asking what if. Keep asking what if. Keep asking what if. Keep asking what if. If you stop asking what if, then ask what then. This is an if-then statement. All the programmers out there know the conditional statements. Ha! You learned something today. Didn't even know it. If you stop asking what then, ask yourself what else? What else can you do? If you've already done the things that you said you were going to do on your short-term list and you've accomplished it, what else? All the things on my short-term list, I accomplished. And now I'm looking at y'all like, ooh, well, what else do I do? Well, I gotta go around and motivate the other people who are bad at math who think they can't be physicists, but they can. <laughs> or the people who have ADHD that think they can't sit in a classroom and learn something. You can. Yeah, no. Or the people who are in the asshole oh, construction no. that think they can't mess with people socially, but you can. Or are artists out there that think they can't do science, but you can. Or the musicians. Right? Or the athletes. Or if you're black. Or if you're Latino. Or if you're Asian, white, German, purple, green, orange, rainbow. It doesn't matter. Right? Now, lastly, I would say, after you ask yourself, what else? Keep asking yourself, what else? What else? And then, if you do one last thing, the last thing I'm going to say to you, before we kick off this Q&A, last thing I'm going to say is, 
What about them? Right? I can do all this stuff, I can do it just for myself, and I can be sitting at home. Or I can do all of this stuff for the benefit of the new generation coming up. What if I was never here at St. Andrews to motivate you who were bad at math to get into physics? You about to be my favorite person. <laughs> right? So keep, keep being creative, keep being curious. Keep asking what if. You can follow me on Twitter. That's the same thing as my IG handle. That's my NASA email. Take a picture. This is my personal website. Take a picture. If you learned something today, give an applause. 